Stand by 10 seconds. Stand by to initiate release sequencer. On my mark. Five. Raw express elevator to hell. Going down. Two. One. Mark. You are listening to the Instant Action Podcast. Hello, everyone. My name is Mark, a.k.a. Derringer. Today is Sunday, March 8th, and you are listening to episode 251 of the Instant Action Podcast, your weekly source for planet-side news and information. As always, I'm brought to you by great listeners like you via the Support the Show tab on instantactionpodcast.com. Speaking of that Support the Show tab, I want to give a shout out to a new patron over on Patreon, Mr. Smegs. I want to give a big thank you to you. Uh, This week's show is dedicated to you. Other than that, what's been going on with me this week? Well, busy week with lots of other stuff going on. My wife is back from her trip to Guatemala, so uh, I'm not going to lie. I've been spending as much time as possible with her because, you know, (laughs) I missed her. (laughs) Let's just throw that out there. Also, my daughter's birthday is next week, so this weekend has been pretty booked with we drove up to New Hampshire to go visit her. She's up at college at UNH, uh, so we drove up to visit her, and that took pretty much half of my weekend uh, knocked out. So haven't done a lot of Planet Side 2 gaming this week. I played a little bit last night, I and obviously we do ops normally during the week, and I, I did ops as normal. But uh, other than that, I've been pretty busy, to tell you the truth. Uh, But also pretty excited that we finally have some sort of end date for Escalation when it's going to hit live. Uh, And then shit's going to get crazy. Uh, Other than that, um, I don't really have anything else to talk about. So let's dive right into what's in store for this week's show. So first, I have that Escalation release date to go over, along with a few other tidbits from Andy's most recent producer's letter. After that, I want to talk about the final PTS update that dropped last week regarding Escalation. Then I want to talk about the initial resource costs and timers for war assets because RHEL tweeted those out last week. Uh, And then finally, give you all the final update status on the recursion real-time stat tracker because that is working again. So strap in as we hot drop into another episode of the Instant Action Podcast. So first up this week, like I said, Andy released a producer's letter late last week uh, titled Escalation Arrives on March 11th. So yes, get hyped because it is friggin' finally coming. So uh, what did Andy write? He wrote, hello everyone, let me start by saying thank you for your patience and support over the past four weeks as we've been preparing the Escalation update for launch. As you know, this will be one of the biggest Planet Side 2 updates we've done since launch back in 2012. Not only do we feel an obligation to live up to the immense level of hype surrounding Escalation, but as the newly formed Rogue Planet Games studio, we want to set the tone in terms of quality for all future updates, which is why we have been much more aggressive playtesting this update on the PTS than you may have been accustomed to in the past. That being said, with any update for a game of this scale, it's practically impossible to catch every bug or perfectly tuned gameplay on a test environment. There are just too many variables that cannot be accounted for until the update hits live. But we believe the extra time we've taken, along with the amazing level of community support and feedback in our playtests, has created a much stronger foundation for this update that will allow us to immediately shift our focus to fine-tuning slash balancing rather than scrambling to hotfix critical issues. The past couple of playtests have given us the confidence to announce a new launch date of Wednesday, March 11th. With the Escalation now officially set to launch, a portion of the team has already started Started work on our next update. Escalation is just the beginning of what we have planned for Planet Side 2 in 2020. After launch, we'll schedule our next dev live stream for late March, early April to unveil the details of our next update. 
All right, I'm going to pause there in reading what Andy wrote and come back to myself. So, uh, like I said on last week's show, I was very concerned about pushing the update further and further and further away. And I really felt that March 11th or, you know, this week coming up was probably the best time frame and pushing it any further than that. They were going to lose some of the community goodwill that they've received. So uh, I'm glad that they're confident that the last round of updates uh, has gotten the game into a state where they want it to be, that they're happy with it, uh, and they're willing to actually push it to live so that we can all start playing it. I mean, when you take someone like me, who has been part of the uh, original group of folks playtesting this or learning about it, uh, for me, it's been since January 14th since I've had a taste of what's been coming in this Escalation update. And so it, we're going on two months before I, I've seen it come to live, start to finish, when I first set my eyes on it or first heard about what they were looking to do in this game update itself. So for those of you folks out there who've been looking at this for a couple weeks or maybe a month now, uh, note that I and some of my other uh, fellow community members have been looking at this for over two months at this point. Uh, so I, maybe it was me personally saying, get this thing out there already. It's been sitting out there for too long or whatnot. But uh, I, I do have to take into account that the regular community folks have not been hearing about Escalation as long as I have and some of the other people that I know. Uh, I am glad that they did say in this update that... They do understand that they can never catch every bug or tune tune everything based on the test environment itself. So they are setting the expectations that there may be bugs. Don't worry that they are going to work on correcting them. I think that they have done an excellent job listening to the community feedback, listening to the bugs that we've been presenting to them and getting those things fixed. So I'm confident that as this comes to live, if any other bugs are shown or show up or are discovered based on live gameplay, that they will get those fixed pretty quickly. Because again, uh, looking at what this started as to what this ultimately has become is, well, at least the, the Outfit Wars portion of it is a completely different animal. Uh, I think War Assets and uh, stuff like that hasn't changed too much. I think that that was in a pretty good place. But uh, the Outfit Wars themselves have are completely different from what they started as uh, based on feedback that we had given them. So the announcement date wasn't the only thing that Andy mentioned in this producer's letter. He also talked about the Emerald server upgrades, uh, and he said that the Daybreak Tech Ops team has confirmed that they will perform the final round of PlanetSide 2 server hardware software, up software upgrades for the Nor North American East Coast Data Center Emerald uh, on Wednesday, March 18th. So we're not looking at that going to be happening this week, but the following week, which... Uh, I hope doesn't affect Escalation too much on the Emerald server. Um, I've been noticing a lot of degradation in gameplay recently uh, on the Emerald server, so I'm, I'm hoping that with a huge influx of players that this isn't a mistake and that they should have upgraded the Emerald data center pr prior to Escalation. Uh, but again, note that they are going to be doing that the following week. Uh, also note that it does state that this is going to be approximately a six-hour maintenance window. So note that next Wednesday on the 18th, and I'll mention this again on next week's show, so it's again in your mind, that there will be a large amount of downtime on Wednesday, March 18th for Emerald players. The good news is that it rarely affects us during prime time, and therefore it should be all set and done before prime time comes. But note that that is coming for Emerald. Uh, I know a lot of people on Connery, that's the other uh, server that I've played on a bit, have said that the, the server upgrades have been really good for them. So uh, hopefully that will be the case on Emerald as well. Next up was a topic that I was pretty heated about last week, and that was leaderless outfits. Uh, and again, that's the term that I gave it, not that other people had given it. And I knew some people questioned the term leaderless outfit because you can't have an outfit without a leader. But 
obviously I was mentioning leaderless outfits as a leader that is AWOL or not playing the game anymore or whatnot. Uh, so Andy wrote, with Escalation so heavily focused on outfits, the topic of leader- leaderless outfits has surfaced among the community. First, to clarify our use of the term, we have thousands of outfits in Planetside 2. Over the years, some of those outfit leaders stopped playing the game, leaving their otherwise active outfits effectively quote-unquote leaderless. To address this potential issue, we are planning to implement a simple, efficient process to promote new outfit leadership in-game. Beginning on Wednesday, March 11th, players can submit a customer service ticket request that outfit leadership be reassigned due to current leader inactivity. If the outfit leader has been inactive in the past 180 days, that's six months, customer service will assign outfit leadership to the next highest ranking recently active outfit member with the longest service in the outfit. To ensure past outfit leaders have an opportunity to return post-update within a reasonable amount of time, all outfit leaders that have their leadership reassigned due to inactivity will have 30 days from March 11th to return and submit a customer service ticket to regain their leader ranking. Uh, They feel that this process should address a majority of these issues, but they'll continue to monitor going forward. So this pretty much is the solution that I was hoping for. Uh, I wish there was a way to not involve customer service, that it could be done automatically in-game, but uh, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. Uh, This is probably the best solution that I could consider uh, in this case. Uh, My only concern in regards to backs at this point, or black arrows, is that uh, I think Eltai popped into the game five months ago, Uh, and then immediately logged out without doing anything. So hopefully by the time next week rolls around, he'll have hit that six-month window uh, so that we can get him uh, dropped out of the outfit leader position into a different position. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But again, I am very happy that they had taken this as seriously as they did. Actually, uh, I got a bunch of private messages from Andy after I posted last week's show. Uh, saying that this was something that they were looking into uh, and that they had a potential solution for it. Uh, In return, I apologize to him for being somewhat harsh on last week's show regarding it. So um, I I think mission accomplished on this, and I hope that the community appreciates the way that I was willing to go to bat for you guys with an issue such as this. Uh, Next, and the final thing in his... uh, Producer's letter was about the European Union data center migration. Uh, So finally, they are in the process of moving all EU regional servers to a new data center. This does require a physical hardware relocation, and they've dispatched their entire tech ops team to perform the move firsthand to ensure that it's done as quickly and efficiently as possible. The PlanetSide 2 EU server moves, this is Miller and Cobalt, are scheduled to overlap with their escalation update, and that does mean that EU servers will be down for 12 hours prior to the game update on the morning of March 11th. He did state that more details will be posted closer to the date, but they wanted to give our EU players a heads up that this is coming. The new server location is in close proximity, and there will be no change in connection quality. So I would imagine that this means on March 10th, uh, probably late in the afternoon uh, U.S. time, that that's going to happen, and that means you know it's going to be a 12-hour downtime for all of Miller and Cobalt. Uh, but it sounds like they're going to do that update, and then they're going to drop the escalation update right after that. So that way, it's pretty much seamless for you guys. You'll just see the one big downtime, and then you'll be right in. Uh, the data centers will be, will, will be migrated, and escalation will be live for you guys so uh, there will be some disruption for you but other than that it's going to be you know you won't be able to play but then when you are able to play you're going to get both things all at once so I think that's the a good solution for that as well Uh, and Andy just closes his letter by saying thank you all for being part of the Rogue Planet Games family so I think that that pretty much covers that entire topic and let's move on to the final PTS update before escalation. (music) 
That final update before escalation dropped on March 5th on the PTS. Uh, And for uh, PS4 listeners, just so you know, uh, PTS is only available for PC players. There is no PTS for the PS4. Uh, I saw quite a few questions regarding that uh, on Reddit last week, so I just wanted to throw that out to you. So in this most recent PTS update, uh, the following patch notes are listed. First, regarding the Bastion, they should no longer appear to stutter when they're rotating. They should no longer snap into place when reaching their stop destination. The engine effect should now turn off when expected when coming to a complete stop. They polished some of the engine visual effects on it, and they polished the explosion visual effects and increased the distance at which the effects can be seen, which uh, that's probably not a huge game-breaking or game-enhancing thing, but I think it's really cool that when a Bastion explodes that everybody within a lo- you know a large proximity should be able to see that thing explode because it should be a really big event that happens within the game itself. So I- I'm excited for that big explosion. Can't wait to see that live in-game for the first time. Next, there were some bug fixes, and actually a really huge one, Critical Chain. They have finally tracked down and fixed the Critical Chain bug so that it no longer will last indefinitely. Uh, I know quite a few people are going to have to be tweaking their Critical Chain loadouts because a lot of people are using it to uh, basically take advantage of that bug. Next up, the Sanctuary map and mini-map no longer disappear at higher zoom levels. Uh, The ant is no longer missing its deploy and undeploy audio effects. Max units produce footsteps again. They fixed a crash that could occur when interacting with vendors. They fixed a crash that could occur in Sanctuary. And they fixed orbital strikes coming in at incorrect angles when used with the construction targeting device. Uh, And then finally, there were a bunch of miscellaneous changes. First, the max burster direct damage resistance type uh, t- from two and four was changed to four, uh, and that means the overall damage output is less than Gorgon's. They also reordered the waypoints menu to make more sense, uh, which was good, especially when you're in a bastion. Uh, they tuned the values on resource trade vendor items. They updated the icons for merit boost, and finally they added some final UI audio feedback for the outfit armory. So there you go. There's everything that was in the last PTS update. Uh, so if you hop into PTS right now, everything's the way it's going to be before we get escalation on Wednesday. With that, let's move on to some talk about release costs and timers for war assets. So in case you missed it, uh, Rel tweeted last week that they do have an initial released cost and timer for war assets. He did say state that they'll definitely need tuning rounds after they see how it plays out on live, but that this will give everyone a better idea of the pacing that they're looking at right now. Uh, and there is a nice Imgur album regarding this to show everybody what the various resource costs are going to be for them. Now, we do know what the name... Uh, or, I couldn't find the name of the first resource. Uh, it's the green resource. It seems to be the most common one. Uh, I can't seem to... I was looking all over for it. I can't seem to find it. So if anybody knows, let me know. Uh, otherwise, we do know that the blue resource is called Synthium, and the purple resource is called Polystellarite. Uh, again, I'll have to... Uh, let me. I'm going to pause the show here, and I'm going to go look real quick and see if I can find what the green one is. So based on patch notes, it seems like the green one might just be called Araxium. So for all intents and purposes today, I'm just going to call it Araxium in case it changes, then it changes. In case I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But uh, so uh, we do know that right now crafting an orbital strike is going to cost 100 Araxium, 25 uh, Synthium, and 3 Polystellarite. It seems like Synthium is more difficult to obtain than Araxium, and Polystellarite is more difficult to obtain than both uh, Araxium and uh, Synthium. Uh, So in addition to those three resources, 
It has a weight of 75. It takes 15 minutes to craft each orbital strike, uh, and you can only own three of them at any given time. Next up is the Citadel Shield. Uh, same resource cost, 100 Araxium, 25 Synthium, and 3 Polystellarite. Weight is also 75, also costs 15, takes 15 minutes to craft, and you can only have three of them. The next three are the different anvils. The light anvil costs 20 Araxium, 2 uh, Synthium, has a weight of 5. It's the smallest weight out of everything. Uh, it takes 5 minutes to craft, and your outfit can have 48 of them. The anvil medium costs 50 Araxium, 10 Synthium, uh, has a weight of 15, takes 5 minutes also to craft, and you can have 12 of them. The last one, the heavy anvil, is 100 Araxium, 25 Synthium, has a weight of 25, also costs 5 minutes to craft, and your outfit can't have more than 6 of them. Uh, those are the global resources. Next, the Araxis only resources. The first one is Steel Rain. Uh, this one I think a lot of outfits are going to be crafting, crafting a lot of. That one costs 100 Araxium, 50 Synthium, and 5 Polystellarite. It has a weight of 50. It takes 30 minutes to craft each Steel Rain, uh, and you can never have more than three of them banked in your outfit. Next, the Bastion Fleet Carrier. The Fleet Carrier itself doesn't cost any resources to craft it. Uh, it does take one hour to craft it, but you do need to craft four separate pieces of a Bastion before you can actually craft the full Bastion Fleet Carrier itself. The first one is the Bastion Rearm and Refuel, which costs 75 Araxium, 75 Synthium, and five polystellarite. It takes one hour, I'm sorry, it takes 12 hours to craft that. You can only have one of them. Next, the Bastion support systems cost 100 Araxium, 100 Synthium, and 10 polystellarite. That one also takes 12 hours to craft. The hull reconstruction takes 200 Araxium, 50 Synthium, and 15 Polystellarite. Again, 12 hours to craft. And finally, the Bastion Response Vehicles only takes 250 Araxium, but still also costs 12 hours to craft. So you could, in all in instances, collect enough of everything to do the rearm and refuel, the support systems, the hull reconstruction, and the response vehicles, and then craft an entire bastion in 13 hours start to finish so obviously each of those individual ones cost 12 uh, take 12 hours and the final bastion fleet carrier itself takes one hour so uh, if you are really really pushing as a a good out you know a, a efficient outfit i guess is the way to say it uh, and want to craft everything in one go you can do that but i am, imagine that outfits are going to craft these things in bits and pieces as they obtain uh, the various resources required, and then when they're all done, finally bank a single Bastion carrier. The good news is you can ba bank a Bastion, which has a weight of zero, which I'm surprised. I would think that the Bastion fleet carrier would actually have some sort of weight when we get to it, uh, but it doesn't here. Uh, so you can have a Bastion fleet carrier, and then you can also start crafting all the other parts to it as well. You can only have one of each of them at any time, though, just so you know. And then finally, there's the expeditions. These are the ways for you to earn uh, some of the other harder-to-obtain resources, like Synthium and Polystellarite. Uh, there's both a short and a medium to each of them. So uh, I read the patch notes saying that you can only do one of these expeditions at a time on live. You can do them from within the outfit war or, or the, the armory on the on your main screen but to collect them you actually have to go to sanctuary to collect them so the first one is the expedition for synthium which is short uh it costs 100 araxium and it takes 24 hours and then you can go and collect it uh the polystellarite one short takes 50 synthium again that is another 24 hour duration one and then when you go collect it you'll collect a bunch of polystellarite Next, they've got the two medium ones for synthium and polystellarite. The synthium one costs 150 Amaraxium, uh, and the 
uh, medium one, the medium polystellarite one costs 75 synthium. Those both take 48 hours, but award you more of each of those resources. And then finally, the two long ones, the synthium long requires 200 raxium, and the polystellarite long requires 100 synthium. Again, those take 72 hours, so three days to complete those, but they produce even more of the other of the resources that you're creating. So there you go. And the way on each of those is zero and you can only have own one of each of those and like I said uh, I did read notes saying that they were only going to allow one expedition at a time to be done by an outfit uh, but that I guess that doesn't mean that you can't bank a whole bunch of them and turn them in at a later date it just seems that only one can be done at any given time now the only thing that isn't mentioned in the war asset cost here is what happens when you overclock these various things and there's no costs to what it's actually going to be to overclock these on live. So uh, maybe we'll get a tweet regarding that from Rel this week because I'm curious what the overclock is going to be for each of these. Because uh, obviously, once you're crafting one of these things, you can hit an overclock button and spend a bunch of additional resources to craft these things instantly. Uh, and I'm imagining that those are going to be really, really high costs. Uh, but again, we'll have to see, and maybe we'll get a tweet regarding those at some point this week. But with that, uh, there's all your war asset costs. Uh, it's good to see these in writing at this point, uh, and I'm even more excited now for Escalation to come to live. But let's move on to our fourth and final topic this week. So that last topic is, again, regarding the recursion real-time stat tracker. If you guys don't know what the recursion real-time strat stat tracker is, uh, it's basically an overlay that you can add in-game which tracks your kills in real time. Uh, it also tracks your KD in real time. It tracks a true KD, too, for those that are curious. Uh, the true KD doesn't include revives in your, K your kill death totals so a lot of people think that that is a better stat than the in-game stat because the in-game stat tracks revives as well giving you a much more inflated K kd than an actual true kd but th that's neither here nor there the real thing that i like about the recursion real-time stat tracker is that in addition to the overlay there's a bunch of achievements that you can earn in game you know getting multi-kills killing repeat players, killing new players, killing developers, things like that. That's what I enjoy the most about it. And there's a bunch of sound packs that people have put in there. Uh, right now I use a Rick and Morty sound pack, which I think is hilarious when I'm running the, the real-time stat tracker. Uh, but the good news is Exploding Fist put a final update regarding this, uh, saying that uh, he wanted to provide an update to the last post that he made about the recent outages. He said, overall, everything was a bit more painful than expected, especially since his internet is garbage. But everything has been migrated over successfully to a new home, and now they have zero data loss. They also took the opportunity to do some house cleaning, as well as much-needed database maintenance to clean things up a bit on the back end. Uh, and he says, barring some additional unforeseen circumstances, the outages should cease from this point forward just in time for everyone to be stuck home for weeks with coronavirus. Uh, he did say that he thanks everyone for their patience, uh, also supportive comments, and also offerings of assistance and hardware. Uh, he did say it is definitely rewarding and motivating to get that kind of response when shit is horribly broken. Uh, and he did also say that while they were under the hood, they grabbed some metrics that people might be interested in. So right now, the real-time stat tracker has over 122,000 total users. About seven, over 17,000 are active currently, and they hit a peak concurrent rate of over 1,500 recently, which is a huge number. They over over 1.1 million saved gameplay sessions in their systems right now. Uh, and they have over 181 million recorded achievements. Uh, and he says he remembers when they celebrated hitting 1 million achievements. And now they have eclipsed that almost 200 million more. Uh, he did state that save sessions take up about 260 gigabytes of data bytes 
database space uh, and the achievement data takes up about 80 gigabytes. So uh, there's certainly a lot of information that they have in there. But ultimately, the good news is that if you had to stop using uh, the recursion stat tracker because it wasn't working or it was crashing for you or whatnot, uh, it is working again. I've been using it. It's up uh, feel free to use the stat tracker again. If you're somebody who's not using the stat tracker, you should check it out. It's really actually an awesome little addition and adds a little something extra to your gameplay of Planet Side 2, especially if you find a sound pack that you really like. Uh, and there's a lot of sound pack options out there for you to use. Because uh, not only does the achievement flash up across your screen, but then there's a nice little sound clip that accompanies it. Like I said, I'm using a Rick and Morty one, and I really, really enjoy it. Uh, but that's it for all the topics this week. Let's move on to housekeeping. 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 Come back later, please. Housekeeping. Not now. Housekeeping. Go away. I coming anyway. So no emails this week. Uh, everybody's just sitting back getting ready for Escalation. I imagine there'll be some next week. Uh, but again, I did want to give a shout out to Mr. Smegs uh, being my newest patron over on Patreon. This show this week is definitely dedicated to you and I can't thank you enough for being a supporter if anybody else is looking to help support the show please go to www.instantactionpodcast.com if you look on the top section of the screen there is a support the show tab uh, if you're on mobile you click the three lines you'll get an option for support the show go through there there are multiple ways that you can support me if you want to uh, and I appreciate every single one of you folks out there who have supported me in the past present or in the future uh, but again smegs this show is dedicated to you that's going to be it for this week's show though how can you get in touch with me or the show? Well, like I said, your first stop should be my website, which is www.instantactionpodcast.com. You can also email me at instantactionshow at gmail.com. You can follow the show on at Instact Podcast. That's where you're going to get all the newest news and information and anything that I tweet about. But in closing, if you've enjoyed the show, please leave me a review on your podcast listening avenue of choice, whether it's iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or anywhere else. That's definitely going to help me a lot now if people are looking for Planet Side 2 content now that Escalation is live. Uh, or will be live. Also, please tell your friends and outfit mates in-game about the show. But finally, thanks for listening, and keep spamming that join combat, formerly known as Instant Action Button. Derringer out.
made it. <laughs>